Hey everybody, welcome to Sailing Tips. Today we're going to talk about asymmetric versus symmetric spinnakers on heavy displacement boat. Stick around. I'm actually pretty excited about this topic because it's the one time on this channel when I might actually know what I'm talking about. I owned a Catalina 42 for 12 years and uh, we raced it and cruised it in a bunch of events uh, and we did pretty well. The Catalina 42 isn't exactly the first boat that comes to mind uh, as a race boat, uh, but it was designed by Nelson Merrick. Um, how many boats are there out there that you can race in a weekend regatta and win and then sail around the world? I think it's a pretty good compromise. We had five spinnakers on that boat. Two asymmetric and three symmetric. Some of them are actually right here behind me. Yes, you could say I have a spinnaker problem. So let's talk about some of the common misconceptions about asymmetric spinnakers on heavy displacement boats. Uh, first is that you can't sail deep downwind. Well, uh, check out this video here of us sailing deep downwind. Uh, we're just squaring the spinnaker back uh, with a conventional pole. And here we are keeping ahead of faster rated boats with symmetric spinnakers. I don't think anybody who sailed with us or against us would say the boat was slow. You need a bowsprit. No, no you don't. We didn't have a bowsprit, and yes, the spinnaker can wrap around the forestay, uh, but there are some techniques to prevent that, and some techniques to unwrap it, uh, even when it does happen, and uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Here's my favorite. The boat wasn't designed for an asymmetric spinnaker. It's like saying, uh, oh no, you shouldn't upgrade the drum brakes on this car to disc brakes because the car wasn't designed for it. Or, uh, no, you shouldn't use radial tires on your muscle car because it wasn't designed for it. Or, no, please, please don't put that uh, fuel-injected Corvette engine in your hot rod because it wasn't designed for it. So, like I said, we had five spinnakers, two asymmetric, and three symmetric. And uh, guess which one we use most of the time? We use the asymmetric A2 runner 95% uh, of the time. We used one kite out of five 95% of the time. Another 3% of the time, we used the uh, A3 Reacher. So that's like 2% of the time left that we actually used the symmetric spinnakers, even though we had more of them. The only time the symmetric spinnaker turned out to be uh, advantageous is on really deep downwind legs where you're doing lots and lots of jibes. I mean, like jibing every two minutes. Uh, if you're jibing every 10 minutes, fly the asymmetric. If you're jibing every two minutes, fly the symmetric. Uh, the reason being is that the uh, asymmetric takes about 30 seconds longer to jibe, that's the only advantage to a symmetric spinnaker on a heavy displacement boat is that you keep it flying when you're jibing and the jibes are a tiny bit faster. That's it. You can really think of an asymmetric spinnaker as the disc brakes of spinnakers and the symmetric as the drum brakes. Yes, they both work. Um, they both have advantages, but uh, the disc brakes have far more advantages than the drum brakes. We had an A2 asymmetric runner and we had an S2 symmetric runner. Um, they were the exact same size, uh, but the A2 was more efficient in terms of lift. And uh, to understand why, let's take a really quick look at this uh, north sails diagram uh, with thrust vectors on it. Uh, you can see that the thrust vectors are longer um, where the sail bends more, which in an asymmetric spinnaker is near the front of the sail. Now, if you go and square that sail back, um, many of those thrust vectors will be aligned with the direction of travel of the boat. So quite literally, you're getting more uh, thrust in the forward direction with an asymmetric spinnaker than you are with a symmetric spinnaker uh, and less healing motion. Uh, so you can actually carry a squared back uh, asymmetric spinnaker in some pretty high winds uh, and you're not really healing over all that much. The only reason a symmetric spinnaker has a symmetric cut is so that you can just pivot it in front of the boat when you're jiving. You don't have to turn it inside out. If symmetric cuts were actually uh, more efficient than asymmetric cuts, well then why is it that your jib, your genoa, your mainsail, they don't have symmetric cuts. They have asymmetric cuts. Not only is an asymmetric spinnaker a more efficient sail shape for a given area uh, of sail size, uh, it's actually uh, more efficient uh, on your crew as well. For example, uh, you can launch, jibe, and douse an asymmetric spinnaker with a pole on a 42-foot boat with two people. Um, if you're doing the same thing with a symmetric spinnaker, um, you need at least five people uh, to do that really well. Here's a, a clip uh, of my wife and I and my dog out cruising uh, with our pulled back A2 um, on a 42 foot boat. Would you go cruising with your wife and your dog in a spinnaker and a pole on a 42 foot boat in 15 knots of breeze with a symmetric height? I wouldn't. And then there's that thing called the death roll that you get with symmetric spinnakers. Uh, because the sail is symmetric, uh, in certain conditions when you're deep downwind, it'll start to oscillate 
uh, and eventually your boat will uh, wipe out and you might put the mast in the water. Uh, well, because uh, an asymmetric spinnaker isn't symmetric, um, you don't get the death roll with it, uh, which is really nice even when you're pulled back deep downwind. So what are the downsides of, of an asymmetric spinnaker pulled back with a conventional pole? Well, the only downside that I found is that it takes slightly longer to jibe, about 30 seconds longer than a symmetric spinnaker. But once again, you can do it with two people. You don't need five people to do it. How does it work? I'm not going to get into all the gory details and specifics about flying a spinnaker, because there's lots of videos uh, on YouTube about how to do that. But uh, basically, you launch it from the bow, uh, just as you would any asymmetric spinnaker. And uh, if you're going to be reaching around, uh, you can fly it uh, like that uh, all day. It's really a matter of hooking up the, uh, the tack line, uh, the halyard, uh, and the sheets. Um, so that's the first step. Then, if you're going to sail deep, uh, you can add the pole after the fact uh, as an accessory. That's the real beauty of squaring back an asymmetric spinnaker with a pole, is that you can make it uh, as complicated and as efficient as you need to, uh, given the circumstances. Uh, and so if you treat the pole as an accessory, um, you don't have to use it. Like, you really, you don't have to use the pole if you don't want to, but it's there in case you need it. So to put the pole on, you simply launch the spinnaker as you would have without the pole, uh, and then you clip uh, the guy uh, to the tack line bail, um, put the pole on the guy, uh, install the topping lift, and um, simply ease out the tack line while you're pulling on the guy. And you're simply, and you can ease the sheets too, and you're just pulling the asymmetric spinnaker around in front of the boat. Uh, when it comes time to jibe, you simply ease the guy uh, back, take the pole off, jibe like you normally would, uh, and put the pole back on on the other side. But this is also exactly why jibing an asymmetric spinnaker on a pole takes a little bit longer. It's because you need to basically ease the tack back to the bow, take the pole off, jibe, put the pole back on on the other side. Whereas with a symmetric spinnaker, it's one motion. I preferred a, a two-to-one tack line uh, on the tack of my asymmetric spinnaker, uh, led back to the cockpit. Uh, the two-to-one tack line uh, provided a lot more control uh, when easing, and it was also a lot easier to pull in, uh, made it possible to pull it in by hand uh, in lighter air. You also need some uh, blocks uh, on the rail and the beamiest point of your boat uh, for the guy, uh, which just lead to a cockpit winch. Let's take a quicker look at the tack setup. Uh, here you can see the snap shackle uh, bail uh, on the two-to-one tack line. Uh, you can see the guy connected to the bail, and you can see the pole connected to the guy and the topping lift uh, on the pole. To douse, uh, we preferred to just blow the uh, tack line shackle, uh, which would then release the tack of the spinnaker uh, and unload it. Uh, it would then typically collapse behind the mainsail, uh, at which point we would uh, pull it over the boom uh, using a letterbox style douse uh, and into the companionway. Uh, but you can also do a windward takedown or a Mexican uh, or any of the other kinds of takedowns you can do with a symmetric spinnaker. You can use a sock too if you want. So. I really don't like socks. So uh, a couple of key pointers in terms of technique. Um, when you're jibing, uh, as I noted, you've eased the tack line all the way back to the bow. Uh, and then to jibe an asymmetric spinnaker, you simply uh, release the active sheet while you're pulling on the, new, on the new sheet, and the clue of the sail will move around the forestay to the other side. Uh, the key to not getting the spinnaker wrapped around the forestay is to uh, delay turning the boat until the clue of the sail is around the forestay. Uh, it also helps if you have a crew member grabbing the clue as it arounds the forestay and running back to the spreaders. Um, that's a helpful trick too. If the spinnaker does wrap around the forestay, um, the reason that it wraps around the forestay is because there's swirls of air coming off the mainsail. So uh, all you have to do is jibe the mainsail and the swirls will go the other way and uh, unwrap the spinnaker. You can also set up your uh, asymmetric spinnaker for inside jibes uh, or outside jibes. Um, an outside jibe is like a windsurfer where the spinnaker kind of blows around the front of the boat uh, outside and uh, an inside jibe uh, is a little bit more like a tack. Um, we personally preferred inside jibes, uh, even in heavier air, we just found that they were a little bit more reliable. Uh, we found uh, we had more wraps when we tried to do outside jibes. Uh, plus you need a ton of wind to do an outside jibe, uh, which you don't always have. Some uh, handicap organizations may penalize you for uh, squaring the pull back. Uh, but many don't actually. Uh, many just take the, the, the size uh, of your biggest spinnaker, uh, and it's a factor of the mid girth. And um, as long as you're using a pole, uh, this is the same as your J length, which is the distance from your mast uh, to your forestay stem, uh, many handicap organizations will not penalize you at all for squaring back an asymmetric spinnaker on a pole. So you'll want to check with your uh, local handicapper uh, or look in your local rules. 
So we had two asymmetric and three symmetric spinnakers to choose from, and the one that we used 95% of the time was the A2 uh, medium weight uh, running spinnaker. So if you're going to get just one spinnaker, I'd recommend getting an A2 medium runner uh, and squaring that back uh, on a conventional pole. If you want to get another spinnaker, I'd recommend getting an A3 reacher. I hope you found this video useful. Um, please add any uh, questions or comments uh, in the comments fields below. Um, if you liked it, uh, leave a like. Uh, consider subscribing to my channel. And uh, thanks so much for watching.